This paper is going to be a little bit tough, the next one. So I want you to be patient because I want, you, I want to tell you about the beam search and uh, another type of loss. And we are going to go back to speech recognition. We want to transcribe, transcribe audio data with text. That's your input sequence in the form of a spectrogram. A bidirectional LSTM is going to give you an output sequence. We are going to need to use connection connection is temporal classification loss because of the following observation. So this observation is made, it's a paradox, made for handwriting recognition systems, but handwriting recognition systems are very similar to speech. Okay? The input is misaligned with the output. And what is the observation? What is the paradox? It says that a cursively written word cannot be recognized without being segmented and it cannot be segmented without being recognized. So you first need to recognize it to be able to segment it. And then to be able to segment it, you need to be able to recognize it. So there's a paradox going on there. And for that reason, you're gonna use connection is temporal classification. We know that your neural network, whatever that you do, these topics we covered, this is just a quick recap. One solution is that you're not only you're gonna emit the labels, you're gonna emit some blanks, and then you're gonna get rid of those blanks and uh, repetitions later on. So in the end, you are not gonna get what you're gonna need to train the model, but you're gonna get a bunch of uh, labels or label indices and a bunch of blanks out of your neural network. And that's gonna be your path. So this is gonna be your path. Previously, we were calling it pi. Here we are calling it a, but this is your path. It's the path that neural network took you. Then we said that we are going to define an operator that it first removes the repeated labels, and then it's going to remove the blanks. Let's see an example. You first remove the repeated letters. There is no repetition here going on. So the next step is removing these blanks, and that's going to give you ABC. And this is what you are going to need in the end. You don't care about those blanks. This is what you're going to need in the end. And the same, another path could give you the same label. There were no repetitions here. You were just removing the blanks. There could be repetitions. For instance, here you have A, B, 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 because for the same input signal, you're outputting the same letter. Your model is outputting the same letter because that's your input signal. It's longer than your target. So you're going to keep repeating yourself. The model is going to keep repeating itself. If you remove the repetitions, that's going to give you ABC. And if you remove this repetition and then remove the blanks, that's going to give you ABC again. So there are multiple different uh, paths that, that correspond to the same label. That's why you're going to, for that particular label, you're interested in the probability of that label given the speech. You're going to consider all of the possible paths that are going to take you to that particular label. So B of A is in B inverse of Z. So B of A is going to be equal to Z. So you're looking at all of the A's, all of the paths that give you the same label to write down your likelihood. And then you're going to have your target sentence that you can use to optimize the parameters of your neural network. And that's going to give you a loss function. You know the ground truth. You know your input. You know an efficient way of computing this probability using dynamic programming. We went through it last session. And then that's going to give you your CTC object. And if you remember for the Google neural translation system, we said that if you're maximizing your likelihood, it's not directly related to the blue score that you're going to use to evaluate your model later on. And over there, we said that maybe making our objective function look more similar to the evaluation metric is going to help. And then we did that, and that helped the model. So here we're going to do a similar thing. Another observation is that if you use this loss function, you're only going to learn from your uh, mistakes and your uh, good behavior. But then you are not going to learn from the discrepancy between your mistakes. You might be giving it, the model might be giving the correct answer approximately. So not all of the wrongs are equally wrong. Okay? Some of the Mistakes are not that bad. And maybe you can learn from those as well. That's why you're going to change your loss function slightly. What, is, what, are, what are you going to do? 
you have your word error rate or label error rate. This is a non-differentiable function. You know the underlying label. Your model is going to take as input x and is going to give you another label. And then you need it to say how many insertions, deletions, and substitutions do I need to make to change the prediction of the model to be the correct one. That's your word error rate. And as you can see, this is not a differentiable function. So you cannot pass your derivatives through this, and you don't need to. What you're doing is computing the expected value of all of these mistakes or error rates. Now, if you are making, if your model is making tiny mistakes, but it's not that bad, you're still going to learn from them. And this is just the expected value of that. That's going to give you a loss function. And this is called expected transcription loss. Now the problem is taking the derivative of this loss and uh, first evaluate it, take its derivative, and then using those derivatives, optimize the parameters of your neural network. Let's try to do that. The first step is getting rid of this probability of z given x using this formula up here, probability of z given x is all of the path that are gonna give you the same label. We're gonna use that. So there's gonna be a summation here of a, b inverse of z. If a is in b inverse of z, b of a is going to be equal to z. And this way, you're going to get rid of the summation over z, and you're only going to do a summation over your a's. Now you can actually compute your z on the fly. z is b of a. Okay. So this is just using the definition of b. So you can come given a, you can compute z. That's why you can get rid of that summation. Now this is your loss function. And one might say, okay, go ahead and do an empirical evaluation of that loss function. Let's do it. What you're going to do is you're going to sample from your probability. So you're sampling from your recurrent run network, pushing it through your, this is going to give you a path. You're going to push it through your uh, operator. That's going to remove the blanks and labels. And that's going to give you your empirical loss. Now you want to take derivative of that guy. This step you're going to need uh, as an intermediate step. In the end, what you want to do is take the derivative of this loss with respect to the parameters of your neural network. But this is an intermediate step. What do we have here? The probability of A given X, we know that it's the product of the probabilities of Ys given X. Once you take the log, that's going to give you the summation of those probabilities. Now you're taking the derivative of the summation of a bunch of probabilities with respect to the probabilities. Whenever a t for that particular time step is equal to k, that's going to be a 1. Otherwise, that's going to be a 0. The derivative is going to be 0. And because of the log term here, you're going to have 1 over pr. Okay, that's just a derivative of the probability with respect to another probability. Perfect. And if you remember, we use this trick that the derivative of a function is equal to the function itself times the derivative of the log of the function. Where did we use this? We used this when we were doing uh, hard attention. We're gonna use this trick again. You want the derivative of your loss with respect to these probabilities. And we are gonna use this formula down here. There's a summation over A, and you're taking the derivative of this loss with respect to, to those probabilities. And that's just because of the summation, and they're taking derivatives being linear, you can switch the role. This is gonna be the summation of the derivatives of these Ls, these penalties. And this is where we are gonna use this trick. Now our F is gonna be these probabilities. So your F is gonna be probability of A given X, and your X here in this formula is gonna be probability of K comma T given X. And we are gonna use that. And this is where the log term is going to come in. Here you have a function. It's going to give you the same function. And then you're going to take the log, the derivative of the log. So we just expanded that term using this formula. And here is where you're going to need that observation, the derivative of the log of the probability given the probability of k and t. This is where you're going to need it. If a t is equal to k, that's going to be a 1. Otherwise, it's going to be a 0. That's why your summation is going to collapse into all of the ATs that are equal to K. And uh, you're also conditioning on AT being equal to K because that's the only place that you have a non-zero value. And that one over the probability is canceling out with this other probability. 
and that's what you're going to get in the end. Okay, that actually that probability is the one that is giving you the conditioning. Okay, so far so good. We were taking derivatives of this guy, but now we are on a computer and we need to do Monte Carlo estimates. What are we going to do? We're going to use this formula here and then do, because everything is now in terms of expectation, there is an expectation going on there. We can keep sampling from this probability and uh, do just add those values. But what are you sampling from? First, you are going to sample from the distribution of A's, your path, condition on X. This is where your neural network is going to help you. But then you are not interested in all of the A's. If at a particular time, this T is equal to that other T, that should be K because of this conditioning. For any other time, you can just use the sample from above, from your neural network. So you're just modifying one entry at a particular time step of your samples. You sample from that guy and you modify one of them. And these are going to give you the samples that go inside your loss. This is not your loss. This is your word error rate. And that's the way that you're going to get the derivatives. The rest of it is chain rule and back propagation. So this, this I'm going to leave as, a, as an exercise. In the end, you want to compute the derivative of your loss with respect to the parameters of the model. But an intermediate step is that you're going to need the derivative of your loss with respect to the predictions of the model, these ytk. And then the rest of it is the derivative of ytk with respect to the parameters. What you're going to do here, you're going to use this summation, use the chain rule, and take the derivative of the softmax. And taking the derivative of the softmax is not that hard. And that's the way that you're going to get this formula. And if you look at it, this z is all of the terms that are appearing in the denominator. And the other term is the ones that are appearing in the numerator of your softmax. Uh, I think uh, now we are in good shape. We know how to take derivatives of our loss and we can do training. Next step is decoding the predictions of the model. I think it's a good time to stop. And for those of you who have questions, I'll be around. I'm confused by this notation of taking the derivative with respect to the probability of kt given x. Uh, which part? Can you point me? Yeah, uh, the way, where are you pointing right now? All of these places where we're taking the derivative with respect to the probability. Yes. Uh, so these are parts of your chain rule. And let's track the chain rule and see what happens. In the end, you want the derivative of your loss with respect to the parameters of your neural network. And now you're going to break this. You want to go backward. The first step is taking the derivative with respect to the predictions, these probabilities. And these, you have the model here. So you are not taking derivative with respect to ytk or ytk prime yet. You are taking derivative with respect to this output. Yeah. OK? And that's what it means. Okay. So you could have labeled this. Uh, maybe you would have been more comfortable if this notation was PTK, like something that you have here, YTK. But it's just a variable. It's an intermediate variable in between. That and then yeah. this probability of A given X, we know that uh, these are independent. So you are making an independence assumption. A is a sequence. And each time for that sequence, you are making an independence assumption. So that's going to give you a product of these guys. So does that part also make sense? Yeah, that helps a lot. Because this guy, you need it. This is an intermediate step. You needed it here. Yep. And the rest of it is what? Is just uh, then the next step is taking the derivative of PTK with respect to YTK. And this is where the softmax is going to come in. And these, you can actually compute them. It's not that hard. This is boring. The exciting part is using this formula. Yeah. And we are going to use that again in reinforcement learning. We saw it for attention. We saw it for uh, this loss. And I guess we saw it also in Google's neural machine translation system as well. So this trick is very useful. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Sure.